This is Moto Perpetuo, a violin piece written by Niccolo Paganini. It's a technical test, an aural adventure, a non-stop waterfall of mellifluous music, and I am learning to play it on the clarinet. Every episode, I must memorize a new line and complete an additional challenge. So let's see how day two went. The day began with me locking myself in my room with the intention of doing the editing I needed to do for day one. Unfortunately, it started off like a herd of turtles. I edited and edited and edited. The entire day almost passed me by until at about 8.30 p.m. I realized that <laughs> I still had to record the line for day two. So I quickly assembled my instrument, got out my music, and drew a challenge from the cup of despair. And what do you know? The challenge for day two was memorized two lines. Compared to the challenge I got on day one, that would be a breeze. These were the two lines I had to play, and so I immediately got to work. About 10 minutes in, however, I turned around and made the unfortunate realization that I had never pressed record. You are really stupid. Now the clock was really ticking. It had been a long day, I was tired, and I wanted to go to bed. So I decided to channel my inner Dominic Toretto. Just like him, I live my life a quarter beat at a time. <laughs> It was time for the Fast and the Furious clarinet riffs. I needed to get this done fast, and so that meant working efficiently. I sometimes think that people wait until a piece is more secure in their muscle memory before beginning the memorization process. Unfortunately, for this piece and challenge, I don't have that kind of time. So I have to begin the memorization process right away. And so to do that, I employ some tricks to commit it to memory as quickly as possible. With this first line, that means learning the pattern of the sequence. As you can see here, the line has a very specific pattern and that pattern repeats four times in a row. We have a starting pitch, two descending notes, the third note is raised, and then we go back up two notes to the starting pitch before descending stepwise for the next three notes, where the pitch that was previously raised has now been returned to natural. Then the passage resets, but a step lower than the previous passage in the sequence. There is only one exception to the pattern, and that is this note, where normally the third note of each passage is raised and then lowered when we step through it later. In this passage, it remains unchanged throughout. Anyway, looking at a passage this way may seem complicated at first, but I find that it makes memorizing things fast a lot easier. The trick for the second line is to realize that you are essentially playing the same two measures twice back to back. In my case, I differentiate them by playing the first one loud and the second one soft, but that's just personal preference and you can do whatever you like. Honestly, in the end, these two lines felt pretty easy. I worked them slowly, applied some practice rhythms, and before too long, they were solidly in my fingers and in my head. However, at a certain point, I was having a little bit of trouble really getting the crescendo I wanted through that first line sequence. So I employed a somewhat odd technique. I sang while I played. <laughs> This creates a very dissonant sound, but it also serves as a nice reminder of what my body and airflow should feel like as I crescendo through the line. The end result is a nice even crescendo through the line. And so, after practicing all of that, it was time to wrap it up. I did some final touch-ups, practiced a few minutes more, and then mentally prepared myself to record. And here is the end result for day two.
have it, another day's challenge accomplished. As always, happy practicing. Thank you.